let's be honest, sometimes our mojo just escapes us and we don't feel very inspired. And what I do under those circumstances is I just play with some paint on paper and see how it mixes and look for some new colour combinations in the hope that it will inspire me. And um, I got to thinking these are so pretty where the colours flow into each other I wanted to do something with them and I, I started doodling. So this is what I do when I just not really sure where to start or I just need to kind of concentrate. So either which way I've learned about my colours, I've learned more about wet up to wet techniques and I've learned some more about how the pens work so you know win-win and that got me to thinking that maybe I should do something a little bit more specific on that sort of doodly idea and because it's autumn and all the mushrooms are starting to grow I thought it would be fun to do something like this, some fun fungi. For those moments when you're not feeling overly inspired. So my name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me about ages ago. And this week it's all about doodling where maybe your mojo's at a bit of a low ebb. If you want to have a go at these fungi, you really don't need very much. If you need inspiration, this came from Raw Pixels, so it's royalty free and I'll, I'll put a link in the comments. Um, you need some leftover watercolour, great way of either using up stuff that's in your palette or trying out new colours. You need a piece of watercolour paper, just an off cut. This is £140 not surface paper which I've uh, taped down. You will need a fine liner pen like a micron pen. That's a 0.4 which I think is a pretty good width but we'll need that later. And then anything else is optional. If you want to add in some whites you might want some gouache or a white marker pen. If you fancy coloured lines rather than black, then you could just use sort of kiddies gel pens, um, which you might have lying around. So the first thing is just to get the caps in place. And I'm going to do sort of, I think, bell shaped mushrooms. I say the whole idea for this came from doing swatches of colours and loving the way that when they touch they bleed into each other and thinking oh these are too pretty just to throw away what can I do with them and that just gave me the idea. Doing swatches is such a useful thing to say which which is the pushy colour you can see this red which I think is perlin maroon I'm gonna say. Um, you can see it's pushy. You can see how they all stay separate until we just have that little bit of touching. That is I think a burnt umber. No that's burnt umber. That looks probably a contaminated uh, raw umber. This is gamboge, it's a lovely gamboge from Rembrandt, which I think is a beautiful colour, so transparent. So we could put that there. And do you know what? Don't really need to do an awful lot more than that. So the colours are mixing in. If you want to push some colour back, you could drop extra in. You could, if you want to, touch in colours to the wet patches and let them mix but I don't see the need. You could tilt it and let the colour, the, the yellow flow in that way if you tilted it um, but you can see how this brown has travelled all the way through the sienna right into the gamboge so it's a really useful way of knowing which ones are going to be the pushy colours on the on the paper, what they're going to do for you. And say, I would always recommend doing swatches, but then, you know, what do you do with them? 
I'd also recommend not fiddling like this. So I'm going to stop, let it dry and then we'll come on to the pen. So we can now start to have a bit of fun with the line work. I say this is a 0.4 fine liner. It's got pigment ink in it so it's waterproof and it's a light um, resistant. Just before I start actually I'll point out look at the lovely way that perlin maroon has travelled through the brown and look at how the brown has travelled on through that um, oh I think it was I say sienna and even on into the the gamboge so if you only got this far hopefully that colour would start to inspire you and help you with your your mojo so I'm going to outline fairly um, let's think should we have wiggly stems I've got a drop there which I'm going to ignore and I might put a couple of little splatters on the end because one splatter always looks like a mistake but several will look like I actually intended it just look at which ones you want to be in front and which ones you want to be behind and do your lines accordingly and this is a point when you're just meant to have fun Be in the moment and just enjoy the process of drawing, making patterns. You know, if it all goes wrong, it doesn't actually matter, does it? It's only a spare bit of paper, a spare bit of paint. The only thing you've spent is your time and time painting and drawing is never wasted. And now we can do some pattern making now. I've got a blob there, so why don't I just do some little circles. You could change the um, width of your pen if you want and have some very fine lines. You could change colour as well. I'm going to do most of this in black and I might put some other colours on at the end. So I'm going to do that one say dotty and I think I'll make this into a bit of a shaggy ink cap by doing sh little lines across and then maybe I'll do one of these stripy and maybe another dotty one so I'll carry on adding in the stripes and dots and wiggles at this point just enjoying the process and then moving on to using a white pen to add in a few highlights, using some coloured gel markers and finally adding in those splots that I talked about earlier on. There is our little mojo fixing mushroomy doodle and hopefully that's put you in a whole better frame of mind and in the process you've learned a bit of colour mixing and colour behaviour and line and pattern so you've actually you've been learning really good skills and just being in the present all through the process too.